Hello! This week we have the concluding part of our mini-series on the three P's. The problem, the promise and the present. And a couple of weeks ago, Dad looked at what the problem was. Last week, Mum looked at the promise to a solution to the problem. And this week, I get to share the present, the gift, that is the answer to the problem. And the present is the presence of God. God himself coming to dwell amongst us in Jesus. And Joseph was told by the angel when he came to announce Jesus' birth, to call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And John 1, 14 um, says, talking about Jesus, that the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. Or as the Message Bible puts it, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. God's desire from the beginning was to be present with his people. Right back at the beginning in Genesis, we read of God creating mankind to be his special friends. He made us to be connected to him, to know him and enjoy being with him. It says that God used to walk with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And that's a pretty close relationship that they had with God. But it all changed when they turned away from him and rejected his wisdom. And that is what we as people have been doing ever since. That closeness has been lost and the connection cut off. And that's the problem that dad was talking about a couple of weeks ago. But God did not give up on his plan to have people as his special friends. Fast forward a few hundred years to um, Moses and the children of Israel wandering in the desert after God had led them out of captivity in Egypt. And the Israeli people were created to be God's special people, a people belonging to him who would know him and love him. He gave the Jews the sacrificial system to pay the price for the sins that separated them from him. And he inspired the building of first the tabernacle and then the temple um, as a place where his presence would dwell. The temple was constructed in such a way that there were various sections. And so the outside Um, would be the court of the Gentiles. And that's where people like us would have to stay. We couldn't go any further in nearer to God's presence. The next part was the women's court. And ladies, we would have to stay there even if we were Jews. Um, The next one was the court of Israel. And that was men only. The Jewish men could go there, um, but not any further. And then there was a porch and a holy place. And it was the Holy of Holies, right in the centre, the heart of the temple. That was kind of his home on earth, if you like. Normal people couldn't go there. Even the priests couldn't go there. Only one person could go there. And that was the high priest, the man at the top of the Jewish religious system. And he could even only go there once a year to atone for the sins of the people. There was such a reverence for the presence of God and his name that the Jews wouldn't even speak the name of God out loud. People had died from not properly respecting the presence of God. And so when the high priest entered the Holy of Holies on that day of atonement, they used to tie a rope around his ankle just in case something happened to him and he died in there. And then they could just pull him out without anyone having to go in to retrieve his body. God and his presence are mighty and powerful and we do need to treat them with proper reverence and respect but we don't need to be afraid of them. God desires us to come close. For us God's presence is no longer something to stay away from but to run towards. Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of all the Jewish laws and religious traditions. They were set in place until a new and better covenant was established. Through Jesus' death on the cross, the problem of sin was dealt with once and for all. He is our high priest. In the past, sin had constantly had had to be paid for by the sacrifice of animals and their blood, But Jesus paid the price for all sin, for all time, with his very own blood. 
And as he died, the curtain in the temple, which had separated man from God, was miraculously torn in two from top to bottom, showing that it was God doing it, making the way wide open to him and not man tearing his way in from the bottom. Now, through Jesus, we have access to God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, or 366 if it happens to be a leap year. And that is a tremendous privilege and one that we shouldn't take for granted. For 33 years, the world had God in the form of Jesus as a man living in it. The disciples got to live with him and learn from him every day as he went about teaching and healing people. Many people gathered to hear him speak and to bring friends and family members to be healed. But considering the scale of the world and its population, even back then, that was a relatively small number of people who got to meet him and even fewer who really knew him personally. God had bigger plans. And God's ultimate desire is that all people everywhere would know him and experience the amazing benefits that come from having God as their father. After his death and resurrection, Jesus returned to heaven, promising to send his Holy Spirit, who would be with them always. He must go so that the Spirit could come. The Spirit came upon those first believers on the day of Pentecost, and they were never the same again. Now they no longer had Jesus with them, but they had the Spirit in them. They became the temples where God's presence dwelt. And it's the same for each of us who have chosen to follow Jesus since that day. We have the actual presence of Almighty God living in us, the same presence that dwelt in the Holy of Holies that Jesus carried, and the power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in every Christian. Sometimes we just need to stop and let that sink in. I know that too often I forget just what I carry, what I take with me wherever I go, whatever situation I walk into as I go about my day, I carry God's presence with me. I am not alone. So that, in essence, is the present of his presence. But like all presents, the question is, what will we do with it? When we buy someone an expensive gift, we want to know that they're gonna use it and we want to know that they're getting some benefit out of it. If we give something handmade, then we're giving something of ourselves, our time, our talents, our love. God's gift is precious. It's expensive because it costs Jesus his life And in giving it, he didn't just give a piece of himself, he gave it all. He gave everything. All so that we could know the joy that comes from knowing God and living in a close friendship with him. In Psalm 27, which is one of David's psalms, he writes in verse 4 and 5, One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. And again, uh, looking at it in the message (laughs) translation of the Bible, um, really kind of brings out uh, kind of another dimension. I'm asking God for one thing, only one thing, to live with him in his house my whole life long. I'll contemplate his beauty. I'll study at his feet. That's the only quiet, secure place in a noisy world. The perfect getaway, far from the buzz of traffic. And so when life gets a bit overwhelming, we need to run to God's presence. But we need to remember as well when times are going well, not to... um, neglect meeting God and spending time in his presence and the same goes when things are very busy and Christmas as we know can be a very busy and hectic time and it might not be that we're neglecting God in the middle of our celebrations maybe Jesus is still the center of our focus when we're celebrating but we get so caught up in the busyness of what needs to be done um, 
that we are so busy doing things for him, we don't find so much time to spend with him. And that reminds me of the story of when Jesus was with Mary and Martha at their house. And one sister, Martha, was busy preparing for Jesus and doing everything she could to make um, preparations for his visit. Mary, on the other hand, was sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to all that he had to say. And Jesus' response was that Mary had chosen the better thing to spend the time with him rather than doing things for him. There's a time for doing things for God, but there's also the time when we really need to just um, quit the busyness and spend time in God's presence. So I challenge you, but I'm challenging myself this Christmas, to not to just get so busy doing things for God that we um, neglect spending time with him, to make the most of that gift that he's given us and to really enjoy being in his presence, to experience the peace and the joy that comes from being with him, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your amazing gift of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, we thank you that you were willing to come and be with us on earth, that you were willing to give yourself to make a way for us to know you and to know the Father. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you have come to be our strength and encouragement, that you've come to be God in us, to empower us to live for you every single day of our lives. Thank you that you are with us wherever we go and we carry you to those around us wherever we go. Lord, I pray this Christmas we would know your presence in a new and greater way, that we would go deeper with you and get closer to you and know all the benefits of having you as our Father. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.